In this video, we'll talk about measles virus and measles infection. So here are some quick highlights. This is a highly contagious viral infection. It's primarily affecting children and it's spread by respiratory droplets. Its incubation period is from 10 to 14 days and the vaccination has dramatically reduced the incidence of measles. So this is the measles virus which belongs to the Paramyxoviridae family and the genus is Morbillivirus. It is an enveloped virus with lipid bilayer and its genetic material is single-stranded negative sense RNA. Now it is highly infectious. So it just gets spread with sneezing or coughing. Imagine you are walking in a place where somebody has sneezed or coughed and that particular air has the particles of measles virus and it can stay in the air up to two hours. So there is a high chance and high rate of infectivity of measles virus. So it's a serious airborne disease. Now here is the measles virus and let's try to look at the components. So here we can see the envelope, here we can see the nucleocapsid protein which is wrapping around the negative sense RNA. Here are the large proteins, here are the phosphoproteins, these are matrix proteins, these are fusion and these are hemagglutinin proteins. So hemagglutinin proteins are really essential for them to dock to a cell uh, membrane. So basically there are specific membrane bound receptors that bind to these HA protein allowing the virus to actually fuse with the plasma membrane of that cell. So measles virus generally gets through rep uh, respiratory droplets and infects our uh, respiratory tract. So basically the lungs are the one which gets affected at the first. So here we are zooming into one alveoli of the lungs and we can see the macrophages, the dendritic cells which are there in the lungs has this particular uh, cell surface receptor known as SLAM. So basically this SLAM and the viral H protein interacts with each other and that allows the virus to get into these cells in, inside the macrophages or the dendritic cells. Eventually these cells uh, which are basically dendritic cells can move from one location to another. They can move to the upper respiratory tract and they can actually infect the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract. Now in that case the viral entry happens through a receptor known as nectin. In, in, in this particular cells also the virus sheds its nucleocapsid and makes new viral particle and viral protein necessary to create new viruses. So overall we can understand which are the parts that gets affected by measles virus infection. Now let us zoom into one particular respiratory epithelial cell to understand the infection procedure. So here is the nectin receptor which is bound to the uh, viral H protein that lead to the fusion of the plasma membrane of the virus with the plasma membrane of the cell that injects the nucleoprotein inside. The ribonucleoprotein eventually give rise to the RNA and the RNA has to uh, replicate. So it replicates through a plus strand RNA as an intermediate. Plus strand RNA goes to the endoplasmic reticulum and gets translated. So many of the translated products involve uh, includes the viral uh, capsid proteins, the surface glycoproteins, etc. And all of these things get transported through the normal cellular transport machinery and they, f uh, f they get assembled onto the membrane like this. Then the viral RNA is going to be packaged inside that and a new virus particle would bud off and would be ready to infect another cell in the nearby. So this is how the measles virus replication cycle work. Now, host can also recognize measles virus. For example, dendritic cells has specific receptors known as pattern recognition receptor. Toll-like receptor 7 or 8 and rig I type receptors can actually recognize the viral uh, RNA. And once they recognize the viral RNA, they can secrete interferon which acts like an alarming molecule. Interferon can really send a signal to nearby cell that they are infected by the virus. So it activates the JAK-STAT pathway and STAT-mediated activation lead to production of antiviral molecule. These antiviral molecule would prevent the assembly of virus in the new cell. This is how the new cell get basically immune to that virus. 
But this particular virus is quite clever. So what happens is there are many viral proteins such as uh, basically P and V protein which actually prevents the STAT activation and thereby tamper around with interferon production and thereby it can evade the host uh, defense machinery. Now let's talk about the clinical symptoms of measles virus infection. So there could be fever, there could be a uh, cold pick spot which are present in the cheeks and uh, uh, near opposite to the molar. There is stuffy nose, maculopapular rash, conjunctivitis, etc. Now all of these symptoms are not seen all together, but uh, it happens in a sequential phase. So basically 10 to 14 days is the incubation period. Imagine at the starting point of this, the virus is, has infected the individual. Then there is a long incubation period where the virus is affecting several immune cells in the lungs and spreading in the airways as well. Then there is a prodrome phase where the symptoms are visible. Like there would be fever, there would be conjunctivitis, coryza, that means stuffy nose, etc. And enantham or, or basically the uh, cold pick spot are actually visible at this stage. After that, there would be a stage where maculopapular rash would be visible and this is known as exanthem and this is basically four days after the prodrome phase. After all these, the overall, uh, the virus would decline, the viral load would decline and there is a recovery phase which can last about 10 to 14 days as well. And eventually once a virus, once a person get, recovers from the virus, that person gets immune for the lifetime. And used, using this principle, the vaccine that is used against or used to prevent um, measles infection is basically a live attenuated vaccine. But anyway, in the prodrome phase or in exanthem phase, this particular virus is highly contagious. Now, young individuals are at higher risk. They can get affected. They can have many complications. This virus is known to infect the lungs, brain and the intestine. That can cause, cause many complications. Secondary bacterial con uh, infection can happen. Otitis media can happen. That means basically ear infection. Pneumonia can happen which affect the lungs. Primary measles pneumonia is very common in babies. Then encephalitis can occur which affects the brain. So basically there could be subacute scleros uh, sclerosing panencephalitis. That means entire brain would be inflamed. There could be diarrhea and eventually in worst case if things go turn into a wrong direction then there could be death as well now diagnosis basically is based on the clinical presentation so the maculopapular rash and all other signatures that we discussed so far are pretty distinct uh, and disc uh, discriminative for this particular disease also there are serology reports that looks for specific igm antibodies against measles virus PCR based detection is good for any viral disease, be it COVID, be it measles or be it any viral disease. It looks for specific gene segments which are exclusive to the uh, measles virus. Then treatment can be done by just keeping the patient in hydration and using antipyretics to uh, clear the symptoms. Vitamin A is recommended in children with measles. Basically, hospitalization might be required, might not be required as well. But prevention is better than cure. That's why MMR vaccine is really important. And every baby should get that MMR vaccine at early stage of its development. And then there could be a post-exposure prophylaxis that can also be done. MMR vaccine within 72 hours of exposure can also cure the disease and reduce the risk of morbidity. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Please support our channel using super thanks. Your small support is our motivation. So see you in next video.